The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the producers and the individuals appearing on this program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the staff of the Sun Prairie Media Center, its members or underwriters, the board members of the Media Center Commission, Charter Communications, TDS Telecom, or the staff and elected officials of the City of Sun Prairie. Welcome to Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbit, and the man seated next to me has a martini on his shirt. His name is Mike Roth. Yes, it is a bowling shirt. Uh -huh. You want to know how many times I've bowled in this shirt? Tell me. Zero. I've probably only bowled maybe ten times in my entire life. <laughs> this is an actual fact. That's I impressive. Do, I, I don't bowl. Like every January, do you throw a few games and call it a day? No, there might have been a year where I've done it twice. Oh. Yeah, something like that. It's a... Uh, it goes yeah. long periods without uh, bowling. Do you have your own ball, your own shoes? Absolutely not. But I got this shirt. Uh -huh. um, it looks kind of nice. It does. I, yeah. It's very. It's it's thick. It's kind of silky on the inside. It's a very smart shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I, <get it. laughs> let's I wouldn't go that far, but. <laughs> let's talk about what we have this week. And I'm going to start us off with our streaming spotlight. And what we have for this week's streaming spotlight is a Netflix series. The Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance. This is a 10-episode Netflix series based on the beloved 1982 film, The Dark Crystal. Um, and it's a prequel series mm -hmm. um, in which the Skeksis, we all remember the Skeksis, have, th have the Dark Crystal, and uh, they are holding the Gelflings as slaves. Yeah. Totally enslaving them. Um, but the cool thing, they really don't know it yet. The Gelflings don't know it yet. Yeah. Yes. They have set up like a shadow government, like a, a puppet government, no, yeah. no pun intended. Um, in which they think that, yeah, we, we make our decisions and we got power, but the Skeksis, no. No, and, and it's really cool in that aspect because it's it's a lot like a lot of uh, culture things yeah. where people give a lot of power to people and they don't deserve it, mm -hmm. and people abuse that power, but no one really quite gets it. And I, I like this show a lot. It's, it's separated into three different stories. Right. Um, where you have a princess that has um, some turmoil on what is good leadership and following knowledge, and then you have another story of, uh, of I keep on wanting to call them fraggles, uh, Gelflings, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where a Gelfling is framed for a murder of right. one of his true loves. I mean, these are really deep stories. Yeah. And then we have another one, which is more of a fantastic, where there's a Gelfling where they don't even... I mean, they know they exist, but they never see them because they live, they're subterranean. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with the Earth, and she has to come out on a quest to um, tell the world that the world is getting sick. It's interesting. So we are just kind of talking about the first five episodes yes. of this. Um, and uh, there's so much about this that I, I enjoy. First off, the character designs are based off of you know Jim Henson's original designs. Yeah. We're going full on puppets. The whole, the they decided we're doing it the way it was originally done. The only time we're going to use some CGI is maybe a little little dazzle here and there, or to remove a puppeteer from the scene. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's all practical. A lot of their world building is also CG, and that's uh, something that makes this a little bit more special than the movie in certain aspects. Is they really concentrate on the world of Thera, yeah, um, as a character. Where right. before we knew the crystal was important and of course everybody's relationship was important they are really taking the time because it's a netflix series to hit home that well, and they've been working on this for a long time it, it feels 37 years it i mean it's been rumored yeah. constantly well, we're gonna make a sequel we're gonna make a sequel P yeah. different people have been attached oh the script's not good enough mm -hmm. and even when this was like attached i'm like until i see some pictures i'm not believing anything because you know it feels like we've been waiting for this forever yeah um and you know it's there's just the look of it is is great. I'm mesmerized by the look of it, and you know the story. I mean, we have one of the things we have. I mean, it, it gets kind of dark. You know, like the, oh, yeah. the Skeksis have discovered that they can use this the crystal to draw the life force out of Gelflings mm -hmm. and kind of use that to live to sustain themselves on. Yeah. And uh, 
Yay, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting to see Gelflings just kind of murdered. But, uh, but no one expects this because the Skeksis are were given the power to uh, watch the crystal. Mm -hmm. They are treated like gods. They're given uh, tithes for their service because they do an important job. Just no one knows that they are taking advantage of right. it. And really, everybody there... Um, it's not a situation where the Skeksis are being worshipped and therefore they have the power. It's actually they have the power and these people are switched and it's yeah. slowly coming out. And I think that since they take their time to do it, it comes out really clever, very smart. Um, I do have a little – it took me a while to get used to the puppetry. Yeah. Because it feels almost uh, – it feels way outdated when, like, I love that. Kiss it's like, like an that. age, a bygone age, man. Yeah, this stands out because we don't see this anymore. No, we don't. And after a while, I got used to it. Yeah. And but um, it took me a little bit to get over the lack of facial expressions and stuff like that. The, uh, I mean, the movie still creeps me out. We covered the movie a couple years ago on the yeah. show. It still creeps me out. Yeah. Um, and the Skeksis still creep me out. Yep. And I'm disturbed every time I hear the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't like that at all. But, I mean, this surprised me, first off, that, you know, it's ten episodes. We've gone through five. They're like 45 minutes each. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good amount of time to spend in this. It's, we're not yeah. just, like, clipping through. There's a lot of time. Um, and there's some pretty heavy emotional storylines yeah. in here. And, like, the fifth episode uh, is kind of a really weighty F. Like, there's some stuff going on in there. And I'm like, whoa, this is uh, – this is pretty deep stuff. Now, I stopped at five because I didn't want to have my next five blur into the sure. first five. Yeah. Did you finish it? No, 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 no. Okay, I started right. six last night. Five, I finished five, and it rolled into six, mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't really paying attention at that point. I, I was like, I started doing some work on the computer, so I was listening to six. You, you've, do you watch the credits roll a little bit? Um, yeah, I mean, you I you know the Simon Pegg's voice is in there. Yeah, yeah, and we also have uh, Keegan Michael Kay in there. I love. We got Mark Hamill in here. Yeah, it's a great voice cast. Taron Edgerton playing Rian mm -hmm. is one of my favorite characters in here. Yeah. Like, it's a really cool voice cast. Yeah, I like that a lot. And you know, I mean, the series has me kind of confused in some parts. Mm -hmm. There's some things that I'm not quite certain what's going on, and but I can't stop watching it. No. And it's that's what I like. And I have a feeling it is all going to tie up in the end. I oh, mean, I hope so. <laughs> I mean, you have three different stories, and you could tell they're going to yeah. full-fledged merge really hard. Well, they already did a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, but, it's um, coming together. I think once it comes together, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this series isn't going to be like one of those little cliffhangers where mm -hmm. we get a bunch of them. I hope they tie it up so yeah. it goes right into a movie. That would be beautiful. It I would really, be beautiful. Yeah. So, so far, I mean... You know, it's we've seen half the series, but we have seen it's you know a few hours now. Yeah, we've watched about three Pretty hours good, of yeah. this show. <laughs> uh, what are you giving it so far? If you have to give it a score, so far I'm giving it a four. I'm really having a lot of fun. Um, I know there's a lot of mixed uh, voices about this. There's mm -hmm. a lot of hesitation about it. I, I encourage people to give it a try. I really do. Yeah, I I'm really enjoying it. I'm really looking forward to what we're gonna get next. If I have to give it a score right now, the score's not even posted. Yeah. I give it a three and a half. Uh, but uh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm really excited to see where this is gonna go. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's like a seven-hour movie, basically. So there's a lot of time to get places. Uh, moving on, let's talk about the one movie we have that's on the marquee this week, yeah, sir. It's such an odd thing. You go uh, four movie, four movie, four yeah. movie. It's like I don't know. It's been a weird month. Yeah. Like the last really three weeks has been like, yeah, just we'll just parcel out little bits of movies for you. Yeah. Next week is no different. But what are, you, what are we talking about this week? Uh, Don't Let Go, uh, directed by Jacob uh, Estes. Mm -hmm. We're just going to say that. Yep. Um, so this is kind of a sci-fi movie, uh, very much a sci-fi yeah. movie. Uh, we have uh, David Aiello. He plays ja uh, Jack Radcliffe. He is a, um officer or uh, detective. Detective, yeah. And um, he's, he lives a busy lifestyle, and um, he's a single guy. And he spends a lot of time with his niece, Ashley. Mm -hmm. uh, Ashley's, sometimes her parents are very uh, neglectful. Mm -hmm. no, no, I don't think they are bad people. They just kind of forget them. And uh, Jack kind of picks it up. Yeah. Uh, sh he is like a second father to him. Um, there was a situation where that entire family ends up getting killed. Mm -hmm. And um, he goes through a lot of grief and 
keeps getting phone calls from his niece, Ashley, who is played by uh, Storm Reed. Um, and it, it confuses him, and all of a sudden... Getting phone calls from his dead niece confuses de yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 well, it confuses <laughs> him. It hurts him a little bit. Yeah. And eventually he comes to picking up the phone, and he pieces together that he is two weeks ahead of her timeline. And the only way he can communicate with her is if she calls his phone. Mm -hmm. um, their timelines run side by side. So when there's time uh, in the future goes an hour, it's also an hour in the past. And he's trying to figure out how to stop her from dying and also find out who killed him in the first place. Um, the timeline, like a lot of uh, these Back to the Future type movies, uh, when he gets some information, it kind of messes with his head. It disrupts his timeline, which kind of makes some parts wonky. And yeah. I would say the beginning part was really slow. Eventually, I wanted him to get to the point where um, he just picked up the phone and let's start yeah. the movie. It takes a while for him to come to that conclusion, but... Overall, I thought his acting was great. I liked the concept of the movie. Um, I enjoyed myself. Yeah, it sets up a really interesting premise. Um, I like the premise of this, and I'm kind of a sucker for time travel. Um, and David Oyelowo, oh yeah, oh, yeah. I'm the one. Hey, you're doing me. <laughs> Oyelowo is great. Yes. Um, and I like Storm Reid in this. I think she's really good in this movie. Um, you know, seeing her kind of in some other things. She was uh, Wrinkle in Time. She was the lead of that. But yeah. Um, I thought she was really good. You have Michael T. Williamson as the uh, partner, uh, basically. Uh, Bobby. Bobby. And, uh, of course, Elfin Molina in here is the police chief. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just, I love the premise of this, and I just felt like it didn't deliver on that premise. And instead of delivering something really cool and new, I felt that it, the film and Jacob Estes, the director, felt very happy to let it become just kind of a standard police procedural uh -huh. where – you know, you've got dirty cops, you've got a chief who, turn in your badge. Yeah. You know, you've got all the stuff when, you know, oh, he's going to go rogue on his own investigation now. And it uh -huh. just felt like so many of these things, these pet peeves of mine, that it was like, well, now we're just, there's no red herrings in the mystery. I thought the mystery itself was really straightforward. They never, like, dangle yeah. different things. And once you figure it out, you really do figure it out. Yeah. Um, there's, like, one little... Oh, I thought that white guy was going to be involved, and it wasn't. But yeah, otherwise, but once I figured really out, really minor, and they cool. kind of just blast right by that. Yeah. And uh, you know, here's my the biggest thing: if you're going to use time travel as like a central tenet of your story, mm -hmm. and that's what this is, time travel is the plot device of this movie. Yeah. You need to be really careful about how you use it, and make sure you're following the rules. And it mm -hmm. felt like they, once they said like, "Oh, time travel. This guy's two weeks in the future." And then it was like, we're just going to be willy-nilly with how that works. I mean, in this universe, there should be so many different mul branches off of, because when she's doing things in the past, it's changing things, and it's not the same world then. Yeah. But and that drives me nuts, because it's not how time travel should work. But uh, in the, like, the butterfly effect in this yeah. situation, it's only a two-week period. So only things that he was actually physically touching or seeing would it cause a problem. Um, but her interactions with people do interactions yeah. with him do count yeah. and they just kind of brush right past that i just kind of paste it in like a lot of the other time traveler movies where they have two realities they just realize both of them are real they remember everything i don't know that but that's <laughs> how i piece it yeah together. their time loop uh, is real and, and not only that but they never explain what caused the time loop what what how did this happen they're like don't worry about it it was a wish <laughs> he wished it <laughs> yeah it's true <laughs> It's like all the Christmas movies. He wished it, and it came true. I, you know, and Alfred Molina. Alfred Molina is a great actor. Yeah. Given nothing to do in this movie. R really nothing. He's just there to say, give me your badge and gun, basically. Yeah. And to be there towards the end. But he, you know, had to do that. I mean, even though it was really cliche, yeah. when you're going around, you know, acting erratic and you're doing a case. Oh, he's, so, but yeah. he's being the standard cop who did something. Go, go, of course, he's going to be sitting there, uh, blank face. Drinking heavily. Yeah. That's what every, every one of these movies does. Well, and then, it, like, you are you know, take some time off. Well, I'm going to start my own investigation on my own. Yeah, it's just like, oh, God, this just decided to become just a standard police movie at that point. Um, I hung with this movie, though, because I thought it was – I thought I was going to get something. Um, I thought it under-delivered under what I was going to get out of it. 
think the second act was probably the strong point. The first act took a while. I see. And now, if I'm breaking it up, I think that the if I'm breaking it up into thirds, I think the final act was really rough. Was not good. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's just my opinion. Like. So, like, other movies have done this. Frequency used this plot device to great effect. Yeah. You know, you have uh, Jim Caviezel and uh, Dennis Quaid and, you know, reaching out to his dad and wanting to, uh, the plot device of the time travel and, and, you know, at that time using a ham radio instead of a cell phone, but to contact someone else. Yeah. um, It really brought a lot of emotion. And he wants to show his dad that he's become, you know, a good man and this and that. And there's a lot of emotion in that movie. Mm-hmm. And I felt like outside of the a, a couple of moments in here, like, I didn't get any emotion out of it. Like, they kind of quickly accepted, like, you know, hey, you're going you're gonna to be dead soon. Like, oh, man, well, that sucks. There's a couple <laughs> of cool scenes. Like, there was a point where they're both in the same restaurant at the same time. And right. And I think, that's the, I think that's the best moment of the movie. Okay. Yeah. Because that's the I only agree. moment that I that's feel cool. like a real connection that we saw in the beginning where we see how you know they have this relationship yeah that's the only time it plays again in the movie of, mm. you know where they stop and just give it a time to breathe yeah and like here let's you know let's let's build on that but um i don't know i think that it, it was a really cool premise uh i think that if you take david Oyo i'm so Oyo. good with his name normally yeah. <laughs> you are I'm i think if you take this out it's a below average film yeah i think if you take him out of it it's below average i think with him in it i think it's average to me i i, I might agree. disagree no oh. actually <laughs> actually my, uh, because david Oyelowo is a fantastic he's really guy good. he's really good and he brings this movie up to a certain level. Yeah. Um, I really didn't think Storm Reed did a fantastic job. I really thought... Uh, I thought she David had some good moments. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I think overall, did you think she was solid? <sighs> solid enough. But I, like, like I said, I don't think they gave her enough weight to her character. Hmm. Like, you know, she's yeah. kind of... Freak- she should be, like, freaking out at some points. Um, she should, you know... She yeah. sees some horrible things. Yeah, oh, yeah. She's obviously experienced some horrible things, and I thought that that didn't that she didn't deliver on that kind of emotion. And even after she found out what was going to happen, yeah, um, I don't know if she like gets annoyed with him. <laughs> pretty much, and she does the exact opposite. But either way, I'm telling too much about the movie. I'm yeah, gonna yeah. stop right there. All right. What did you end up giving? Uh, don't let go. I I really enjoyed myself. Um, mm-hmm. Three point five. I I thought it was good. I liked it. All right. I give it a two and a half. Like I said, it's it's average for me. I don't know. Uh, Whatever. <laughs> Nicholas Cage in this thing is a five-star job. Put Nicholas Cage in there. Oh, oh no. Well, th- th- now we'd be talking about a lesser <laughs> movie. But, you know, we are in the middle of a series. We are. We are, actually. Where we talk about only good movies. Oh, only good movies, I hope. It started last week. Uh, Best in Show is our new movie throwback segment for the next uh Several weeks. Not and the movie uh, about the dog. Oh, man, if only. we I talk about that every week. <laughs> I love I that movie. I quote that movie every week. Uh, last week, we started off with, this is our series about uh, movies that have won Best Pictures at, at, at the Oscars. Uh, last week, we started off with The French Connection. This week, we take it into the 2000s, the first year of the 2000s, even. The new millennium yeah. kicked off with a movie called Gladiator. It was a good kickoff. I yes. Gladiator is one of those fantastic movies that I've watched over and over and over again. A Ridley Scott film where he brought Russell Crowe. This is kind of the first Russell Crowe starring vehicle. Like he had just come off of the um, uh, the informant, uh-huh. which he was good in. But this is kind of the first one where they turned the keys over to him. He was great in L.A. Confidential. Mm-hmm. But now it's like, all right, Russell Crowe, let's see you be a movie star. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is a, a period piece, a swords and sandals epic, if you will, mm-hmm. where he plays uh, Maximus, um, who is uh, a great soldier for the Roman army. And uh, through a chain of events and jealousy, mm-hmm. um, he is enslaved and forced to be a gladiator for the whim of the new Caesar, Commodus, played by Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, who's just great in this. We also have Connie Nielsen, Oliver Reed, who I love in this, and he unfortunately passed away in real life while they were making this movie. Yeah. Um, and Richard Harris, who played Caesar at the start. Um, and this movie, uh, it, it won Best Picture, obviously. Uh, it won Russell Crowe, the uh, Best Actor mm-hmm. Award. It also won Best Costume Design, Best Sound, and most importantly, Best Visual Effects. I think the visual effects of this movie are the most impressive part of it because... I mean, they rebuilt the Roman Colosseum. Yeah. They filled it with people. They put lions in this and, movie. And, and some of these shots going over fields, and it, it's 
a beautiful, beautiful film. Yeah. Um, on top of that, beautiful score too. Right. Uh, they went to it was lighthearted, it was electronic in a in a bit, but it wasn't uh, poppy. There's it a was little Danny Elfman in here. That's why you're gonna get ah, some uh, electronic in there. This is beautiful melody. This melody. Um, interesting enough, though, uh, one of the things that uh, I came away with uh, this movie, it, it reminded me of um, hearing stories when this after this came out about all of the onset drama about the actors, the lead actors in this movie. Uh -huh. And Russell Crowe has a not stellar reputation in Hollywood. You know, I mean, okay. he's known for throwing a cell phone and hitting his assistant in the head with it. And a and couple this, of racist remarks. Yeah, in yeah. this movie. Um, is kind of you know his first big acting gig, like starring gig, and he started up with the um, demanding rewrites of the script. My character wouldn't do that. Oh, you know, it's like, whoa, yeah. oh, we're already doing that. Okay, um, you know, flexing his movie star muscle yeah. that he had, and then you had Joaquin Phoenix, who uh, was you know going almost full method actor on this one, mm -hmm. where he demanded to be like slapped before his scenes, and he's Commodus would do this, and Commodus would do that, and. In real life, like full on crazy that we would see uh -huh. from Joaquin several years later when he kind of lost it for a minute. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I rewatched this movie, man, and I love Joaquin Phoenix in this movie. He's so detestable. Yeah. He's, he's just so hateable. He's fantastically hateable. <laughs> <laughs> he really, is. really is. You know, and so now they're also talking, uh, there's a Gladiator sequel that's in the works right oh, now. Oh, no. Ridley Scott back in the director's chair. They've been trying to do one for several years. There's been different scripts, kind of like our Dark Crystal talk. Over the years, they've been wanting to do different things. So this one is going to be s a script that places the film 25 to 30 years after the, our story that we have here. Okay. Um, Ridley Scott's directing it. It's going to be fo focusing on Lucius, who is um, Connie Nielsen's son, the nephew of Commodus. He's yeah. going to be the, the star of it. Okay. No one's attached, but they're uh, going forward with this Gladiator sequel. I... I don't, I can't see it. I you really know they can't. made a Raging Bull 2 a few years ago? <laughs> you don't need to make sequels to great movies. No, and if you want to keep the world, you can, but you don't need to keep it this one. I mean, it was yeah. based on historical. A lot of stories to tell in that yeah. time. Well, I, I don't get it. Uh, oh, well, I, I do. It's yeah. money. It's money. It's money. That's what it's all about. Yeah. It's always about money. Um, so, uh, Gladiator, let's talk about uh, 2000. Uh, the movies it beat out for Best Picture, by the way. Oh, okay. It beat out Chocolat. Okay. It beat out Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh. I like that movie. Uh, it beat out Aaron Brockovich. Okay. Uh, and it beat out Track for Best Picture as the contenders. Huh. Kind of uh, a light year for Best Picture, in my opinion. Yeah, it is. Um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I wouldn't. I would think that we got Best Foreign Film. I'm oh. sure it did. All right. Without I'll looking, or maybe try, actually, Chocolat might have won Best Foreign Film. Oh, I okay. Think about it. Um, and uh, Russell Crowe beat out Javier Bardem. Uh, he beat out Tom Hanks in Castaway. Mm. This was after Tom Hanks coming off of Forrest Gump. Okay. All these movies, winning big awards. Uh, he beat out Ed Harris in Pollock and Jeffrey Rush in Quills. So those are the... I, I would think uh, he probably didn't deserve best actor out of those uh, lists. I would agree. But he was fantastic. Not to say he was bad. He was fantastic in this movie. But the best actors that year really... Butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'd be fine if Ed Harris would have won for Pollock. He was great in that. Yeah, and, you know Tom Hanks was on the screen the entire m time in yeah. Castaway. He got one actor in an entire movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here act with this, <laughs> act with this ball. Do something with it. <laughs> Make it your friend. <laughs> Make it your friend. So, uh, Gladiator though, it's I think it's worth the rewatch. Oh yeah, um, I I actually would suggest you putting it in your library yeah. of movies. Because this should be something that you watch frequently. Sure. Uh, act most of these Oscar uh, films are things Hopefully. you should watch frequently. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, yeah, there's a I'm not watching Chariots of Fire over and over again. No. I know that. We did that a few years ago, and I was like, that's the last time I'll ever see that. Yeah, that same here. <laughs> I, I bought it, and I was like, you know, I remember watching this a lot when it was on HBO when I was a sure. kid. Sure. I don't know why I watched it a lot. I don't as know a kid either, because it's HBO. boring. It is very boring. Yeah, but I'm not watching The English Patient anymore. Mm. That's not on our list. No. Spoiler alert, don't be waiting for The English Patient to be in this Best in Show <laughs> series. But we may end up getting a movie you've never seen before. Mm. Midnight Cowboy. Yeah. I've never <laughs> seen that. Looking forward to it. Uh -huh. All right, let's take a look ahead at what is going to be coming out the weekend of September 13th. Mike, we have two movies that are on the marquee that week. Awesome. The first one is a movie called The Goldfinch. This movie has a really interesting cast of uh, um, Finn Wolfhard, 
You know, we love him from Stranger Things and It. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also has uh, Ansel Elgort, who plays a young man who uh, um, is going, s- going through some things. He uh, decides to steal something that he shouldn't have stolen, mm-hmm. and uh, now people are out after him. And uh, it's got an interesting cast. So I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to this kind of heist movie. And then we also have Hustlers, the new Jennifer Lopez movie, where sh- it's I it now I've heard her okay. say that it's Goodfellas for women. Where she plays a uh, um, uh, the star in a strip club, mm-hmm. uh, and her and her gang of strippers are also uh, uh, drugging and robbing uh, Wall Street guys, getting back, getting their comeuppance on these guys. I like the premise of the movie, mm-hmm. and um, some of the scenes in their trailer, yeah. I I appreciate. Like that they mentioned the exploitation of uh, the the uh, the entertainers right. in the industry where people rake in the cash. Everybody else rakes in the cash yeah, for all the hard work. Why that can't we get some of this? Exactly. <laughs> These and guys steal from people every day. And going against Wall uh, Wall Street is always a fun it's thing. A, it's for a good me. bad guy. It is. Uh, but I'm not really getting the feels off that trailer of the next Goodfellas. I, I really. I don't know. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez says it's the next Goodfellas. Mm-hmm. Star, it also stars Cardi B in her first uh, starring role, and she. And Lizzo. She used to do this for a living. She was a stripper who mm-hmm. uh, admits that she would drug uh, guys and steal their money from them. So this wow, is so this is her story. Really uh, art imitating life for her. Wow. Yeah. Not much of a stretch for her <laughs> acting. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. Uh, before we leave you, of course, we have to thank our sponsor, Marcus Theaters, The Palace here in Sun Prairie. Thank mm-hmm. you for sponsoring our program. We do appreciate it. I, uh, I stretched out in the Dream Lounger last night. Oh no! Well, I had you know I had a nice meal there in the bistro. Uh huh. It was I had the theater all to myself. Yeah. It was it was every boy's dream. I'm just eating food, no one else around. I'm full on, you know. I'm I'm one step away from being uh, De Niro in Cape Fear. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Lighting up a stove. Yeah. If I, I would have had a stogie, yeah. it would have been all over. You know, I do take advantage. If it's only happened a few times where I get into a theater and there's absolutely no one around. Yeah. I do De Niro. I, yeah. I laugh really loud. Yeah, who cares, I get right? up, I stretch a little bit. Sure. It's nice. Everybody, don't let me do that. Go to the theater, <laughs> buy a lot of tickets. <laughs> I don't mind if it's empty when I'm there, at no. least. Um, so next week, sir, we are going to be talking about things such as we're going to finish off the last five episodes of the Dark Crystal series. I'm looking forward to that I a am lot. as well. Uh, we also have uh, finishing off another story, It Chapter 2. Uh, we'll be talking about next week. We're going to yeah. find out what happens to Pennywise. Does he get his comeuppance? What happens? We get the adult version, and that adult cast looks pretty crazy. Yeah, it looks crazy. With Jennifer Chastain, mm-hmm. uh, 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 James McAvoy, mm-hmm. Bill Hader. I like Bill Hader a lot. Eh. So, uh, it Chapter 2. I'm uh, a hater. <laughs> <laughs> we also have Britney Runs a Marathon, starring Gillian Hall. Um, our best in show, which is going to be uh, an all-time classic. I just stay tuned for that. Uh, how about let's just say it's an award-winning movie. It's a <laughs> an award-winning film. <laughs> um, and you know what's interesting? Also, huh. I saw this week. I'm going to have to go back to the theaters and see a movie that I saw twice in theaters already. Midsummer. Yeah, has been re-released. Ari Aster released it with 30 more minutes of footage, and he says it's all the disturbing stuff. Everything that kept that he had to cut to get it down to an R rating. Really? Yeah. I didn't think it was a hard R feel to it's, me. It's well, you know, I'm thinking of the scene where he impregnates the lady. Oh yeah. You know. And maybe the one where the guy is uh, chicken food. There's a, yeah, there's going to be some a lot more gore and uh, you know. Yeah. Giblets. Okay, okay I get so it. So 30 more minutes of Midsummer. I'm gonna have to go check that out. Okay, and we also have uh, the extended of Spider-Man. But right. I mean, a that's lot of the people thing, are really upset about that. Spider-Man, right now. the Avengers. It's like, hey, well, this is re-releases with some more stuff, mm-hmm. and then you can. You'll come and see it again. Mm-hmm. It's brilliant. I hate it, but it's brilliant. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, it's usually anyway. what gets me to buy the DVD. Exactly. Or that's true. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about next week. Please tune in next week. Return, and uh, you can find us uh, sitting right here talking movies. If you just uh, go to the uh, Sun Prairie Media Center dot com website, and you'll find all of our previous episodes on there. There's 281 episodes sitting on that website. That is waiting crazy. For you. Someone asked me how many I was like, I think around 300. We're, We're getting close. close. We're, We're getting, getting real close. close. Anyways, until next week, I'm Jameson. I'm Mike Roth. Thanks for watching.